Um, so I, like, like, uh, like I said, I'm a, I'm a software guy, um, going back a little bit. Um, but my focus these days is on developing systems. So if you want to discuss uh, various um, bundle adjustment implementations, I'm, I might not be your guy. Um, but if you want to talk about how to take a whole bunch of video streams, process them, develop a bunch of analytics, um, visualize them in a way that you can get some actionable intelligence and hopefully do that on as many computers as possible, well then let's find a place with comfortable chairs and cold beer and, and we, can, we can really sit down and, and talk. I guess I'll need my little uh, gizmo here. Um, so what I want to talk about today is, is open source software and open source software especially as it relates to uh, UAS systems and, and developing analytics for, with UAS systems. But to do that I want to talk a little bit more about open source software in general. Um, and to do that, I want to talk a little bit about Kitware and how Kitware got started. Um, the company has been around for about oh, 15, 16 years at this point, and it was founded when um, our current CEO literally wrote a book on scientific visualization. So he was, he was doing a book on how you visualize um, point clouds and meshes and 3D systems and so on. Um, and when he wrote this book, he decided that uh, he was going to publish a, the software that he was talking about and the techniques that he was talking about as a toolkit, and he called the toolkit VTK. And he made that available to anybody who wanted to download it, and, and they could use it for any purpose they want. So he, he made available not just the, the capability to do these scientific visualizations, but the actual source code and the instructions to the computer that allowed him to, to do this work. And he, and he bundled that all together with the book, and he sold it, and the book was successful, or reasonably successful. And what happened is that people said, oh, you seem to know what you're doing, and, and that's kind of cool, and, and, and we've got something that, that's sort of like that. Do you want to help us with that? And that happened frequently enough that he essentially founded a company, Kitware, to, to manage it. The other cool thing that happened with this software is he found people saying, hey, that was, that was really cool, and we used it, we did this other really cool thing, and, and we added a little bit to what you did. D do you want that to put it in there so that other people can do that? And, and he said, sure, that, that sounds good. And that's, that's basically, in a nutshell, the way open source software works. And we talked yesterday during the keynote, there was a lot of talk about democratization of technology. And that's where um, we think um, open source software really shines, is it really is um, a way of democratizing technologies. And that's especially important in sort of new and exciting areas of technology so that, that everybody gets a chance to sort of benefit from the work of others and then move the, move the technology forward. So I work for the computer vision group within, within Kitware, and a lot of our work over, over the last eight years, the group's about eight years old, um, has been for the Department of Defense um, doing uh, video analytics for um, aerial platforms. Typically the, the analytics are either WAMI analytics, so wide area motion imagery where we're getting really, really large images, really, really large images about once per second, um, which is enough for us to track uh, movers um, over a sort of city region. Um, and we also do a lot of work with full motion video, FMV video, which is a little bit more like some of the video we've been seeing um, over the last couple of days. Um, but it has the added adventure, not only is the aerial platform moving, but the, the camera is typically mounted on a gimbal that is controlled with a, with a joystick or other controller so that the camera can be pointed and zoomed and so on. So there's a lot of motion, a lot of full motion um, going on there, which, which makes some of these analytics fairly interesting. The group traditionally has not released our software, the software that we develop, um, as open source, because largely because for two reasons. One, our customers typically, especially in the early part, early existence of the group, um, was the Department of Defense, the intelligence community, and so on, and they are cautious about releasing some of the technologies that we develop. I say cautious, though, and not opposed. They understand the need to develop the technology, to see things um, move and improve, and they understand that sort of sharing that technology is a key, um, key component. Um, so, you know, there were mechanisms in place for us to get permission to release our software, but we didn't do a lot of that because, well, quite frankly, there weren't a whole lot of people flying aerial platforms outside of the, the Defense Department. Things have changed, right? 
in the past, if you wanted a, a, an aerial platform that you could, you could collect video analytics with or collect video that you could generate analytics with, you needed a congressional appropriation. Um, now, it's basically a business expense or a Christmas present. All right, so that's, that's been a major change over the last few years. And so what we've seen from, a, from our point of view is that there's now an incentive because there's now a community, a potential community that could use our software and would be interested in it to start releasing some of our software as open source software. Um, and we believe that's an important thing to do, again, for this purpose of allowing people to sort of build on the, the, build on the experience of others. So given this big change, given what's happening, what do we think becomes important? Well, we do think that video analytics in general is crucial to making use of, of what will become a vast quantity of video data becoming available, okay? As soon as everybody can fly, as soon as some of the regulatory environment loosens up and so on, there will just be more and more data, and so it'll become more and more important to be able to efficiently process that data and, and turn it into actionable, um, actionable work, actionable intelligence. So we, we sort of see video analytics as answering sort of two questions. What do I see? Um, how does it change over time? That sort of thing, that's a lot of what we've been talking about here in the, in the last couple of days. Um, but we also believe that one of the things that's important is what's actually happening in that video. Okay, are, are people moving? What are the patterns of life? Where are people going? It doesn't have to be people. It could be wildlife, it could be uh, livestock. Um, you might be sending your drone over, over your ranch in, in Montana on a, on a regular basis, and if you can sort of analyze the movement patterns of your, your, your livestock, that might provide you with interesting and useful um, data, like data that allows you to make decisions about what you're gonna do, that sort of thing. So to build these analytics, to build the software that, that we've been providing to the, to the government and now are making available open source, we use a lot of open source software. So here's a bunch of logos from the various projects that we're, we're using. Basically, I kept putting them on the slide until I got tired. It's by no means a complete list. Um, but it is a collection of a wide variety of available technologies that you can, you can use and make use of and, and move forward with. Um, to develop the kinds of solutions and analytics that, that you need. Um, one of the things that's happening now is, as the computer vision community is developing new techniques is some of these building blocks will now be including various machine learning algorithms, deep learning algorithms, excuse me, algorithms, libraries, and so on. So this, this collection of logos is, is always growing. One of the challenges, though, is that dealing with all of that is somewhat idiosyncratic. All of those packages um, need to be built, configured, used. They're not always well documented. There are, there are a lot of challenges to pulling these things together into actual solutions. One of, one of, a, one of the very common things that happens in our group is we get phone calls from people that, that essentially say, hey, I downloaded OpenCV, which is an open source computer vision toolkit, but we really can't figure out how to get it to do what we want it to do. And so that's, that's, a, that's an interesting challenge and an interesting um, problem that, that, that we've been working on and trying to help solve. So given all those problems, you know, the, the question might be, well, why, why use open source software, and in particular, why develop open source software? Why, why, have, why deal with, with those kinds of problems? So, so Isaac Newton, aside from inventing calculus and, and making the life of a certain freshman computer science major somewhat unpleasant, not that I'm bitter, um, has this, great, has this great and famous quote where he talks about standing on the shoulders of giants. And the, and the key thing about that quote is the reason he was able to climb up on the shoulders of those giants is because those giants were publishing what they did. They were talking about what they did in a reproducible and useful way. Okay, so they were making that available and he was able to take what they did, build on it, and advance the state of science, the state of knowledge, and so on. Linus Torvalds, who's the developer of, or the creator of one of the more successful open source projects in, in, in the world, um, the Linux operating system, um, sort of talks about that in the same way and points out that open source software is one of the ways that we can sort of share our knowledge by, by publishing open source software. We, we 
sort of allow other people to benefit from, from our work and then we can benefit from what they do with our work and the state of the industry and the state of technology sort of moves forward in a very, very accelerated way. The, the growth of the internet over, over the course of the last 15 or 20 years um, is an example of that. A lot of the infrastructure that, that enabled the internet was developed and produced as, as open source software. So what we decided to do is the way for us to share what we've learned and what we've done is we've produced an open source toolkit called Quiver. And you can think of Quiver as the computer, the computer vision group's version of that visualization toolkit book that our CEO published. Except the difference here is you don't even have to buy the book. You can just go to quiver.org, see what we've done, download it, look at it, see what, what makes sense to you, what's useful to you, maybe make use of it, build on it, build your own products, your own solutions, do your own work, and, and benefit from, from that sort of growth of the technology and the advancement of the technology. So a Quiver-enabled system, or a system that uses Quiver, is basically going to be producing some sort of um, video analytics, and it's going to be using maybe some, some other components of Quiver. The way Quiver is structured um, for us is we release different chunks of our technology as it either sort of either because it's organizationally um, sensible or because we got permission to release a particular chunk of, of software. And then what those those chunks I'll be talking about will be um, MapDK, Vibrant, Vivia. Um, we also have some sort of basic infrastructure source code that sort of helps you tie all these things together. The first thing we have to sort of tie a lot of these things together goes at that um, sort of huge list of logos I had early on that the difficulty there to, to pull those things together, configure them and make them work together. So we've developed a packaging system that, that you can sort of customize that knows how to build a variety of packages that can be used um, in, a, in a straightforward way for your own applications and, in, and supports sort of the rest of the, the Quiver um, components. Vital is, a, is basically our core library. It provides some simple, straightforward uh, logging and configuration things so that you can sort of you know, standardize on some, some basic things. But most importantly, it provides a plugin manager that allows you to mix and match algorithms from different toolkits, different um, sources, and use them in your applications. So MapTK is probably the most relevant of the components that we produce um, to, to this group. It's basically our open source uh, photogrammetry um, toolkit. I'm not the person to talk in detail about MapTK, and in this group I don't have a chance to, to fake it at all. Um, so I, I I'll just I'm gonna point out a couple of things. We're in Reno, so one of the ways I think of MapTK for Quiver is that it's the ante for getting into video analytics. If you don't have some way of registering your images, stabilizing your images, um, figuring out your camera pose information and so on, it's very, very difficult to produce any other kinds of, of, of analytics. One of the things that MapTK sort of specializes in, aside from being a, an open source toolkit, is it's optimized for video processing and tries to take advantage of the fact that um, the video is available um, and that temporal information can be used to improve uh, the calculations that, that MapTK um, is making. I'll show you a quick example of, of how MapTK can be used and how sort of this general um, use of other open source toolkits and so on works. Um, in this case, we're using a couple of simple tools that MapTK provides for doing feature tracking um, in a sequence of images. Basically, we're going to use the, we're going to track these, detect and then track these features to develop frame-to-frame um, -frame homographies so that we can sort of subtract out motion, register the images, and that, that sort of thing. Um, but what you can see here is the way you use these tools, you, you configure them and you can see in red the different sorts of algorithms we can use for the particular key components of MapTK and that allows us to sort of quickly mix and match, select the best of breed, measure which ones are best in, under certain circumstances and, and that sort of thing. Vibrant is our motion detection and tracking um, component. Um, we recently got permission to release this. This takes, uses MapTK and, and other techniques for stabilization, and it can do basically real-time tracking of incoming video streams, tracking vehicles, um, persons, um, classify them into vehicles and persons, 
deals with some of the challenges, the low resolution challenges of, of video coming off of some of these aerial platforms. It, it can sort of, it has capabilities for segmenting out, you know, blobs that look like people and blobs that behave like vehicles and so on. So, so it is, it is sort of one of our bread and butter um, applications. Vivia is a collection of GUI applications, again, fully open source, available. It allows you to um, have a VCR-like, uh, excuse me, VCR-like uh, interface to um, to the video that's that's coming in. You can pause, you can play back, you can scroll forward, scroll back. It's all built on uh, QT, an open source GUI toolkit, which means it's cross-platform. It runs on Windows, Mac, Linux, etc. Um, it also deals with the overlay problems of overlaying analytics on top of that video so that you can present your video in a, in a reasonably interesting um, way. What I'm going to be showing um, is an example of uh, VS Play, which is our FMV analytics app. So if I can have the video here. So this video is just a fairly short clip of some, some video for which we've done uh, video capture. Basically, it's showing the full stack of um, analytics that we're producing and making available as part of the, the Twitter tool toolkit. And what you'll see here is that um, we're starting to track the people here, and in a moment you will see um, the video be stopped here, paused, and then we'll go back to the beginning. And now what we're going to do is we're going to draw a tripwire across the thing. So, so the reason this video is interesting is because it's showing the full stack. You'll see that that tripwire is going to stay pinned to the ground as you would expect um, it to do to be useful. That's making use of sort of the stabilization information that MapTK provides. Vibrant is doing the, the tracking. You'll see the folks um, get off. You'll, you'll notice one of the, the truths of, of video analytics is the, is the challenge of sort of classifying. And now you'll see the, the two gentlemen walking across to see that that trip wire has generated a bit of in interest. So if you had video where you're trying to um, you know, track movers and see where they're going, whether they're going to interesting places and so on, you've got those kinds of capabilities with this stack um, of software. I'm running a little bit out of time here just to, oops, get in the video there. Um, so, Quiver is an open source UAS toolkit. Um, open source projects like this, we believe, can be a rising tide that, that raises all boats. So that's that's sort of our reason for, for releasing this stuff. Um, I'll be back, I'll be out in the, the, the exhibition hall at the, the <clears throat> excuse me, in the tables in the back. If you're interested in um, talking a little bit more about Quiver, I'll probably be uh, sitting, uh, working away on my laptop, working on Quiver. Um, so if you have any questions or, or comments, um, please don't hesitate to, uh, to uh, come and talk with us.